Today we're going to learn about linearizations and how to approximate a function using a tangent line. After introducing the idea, we'll go through this example problem and then this example problem with cosine. Let's get into it. The idea behind these linear approximations is that the tangent line to a curve at a point is actually a good approximation of the curve near the point of tangency because differentiable functions are what we call locally linear. For a quick example, consider the tangent to sine of x at x equals pi over 2. To find the tangent line, we simply use point-slope form, y minus the y-coordinate of the function at the point, and sine of pi over 2 is 1, so that's y minus 1. And then this equals the slope multiplied by x minus our x-coordinate, which in this case is pi over 2. The slope is found by taking the derivative, so that gives us cosine, and then plugging in the x value. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so the slope is 0, and this just leads to the equation y equals 1. This is what it looks like on a graph. In red, we have sine, and in blue, we have the line tangent to sine at x equals pi over 2. And if we zoom in, we can see how sine of x as a differentiable function is in fact locally linear. As we zoom in closer and closer to the point of tangency, it's clear that the tangent line is in fact a very good approximation of the sine function so long as we stay close to the point of tangency. That's the idea behind these linear approximations. Here's some of the vocab. If we've got a function f that's differentiable at the point x equals a, then the tangent line at x equals a is called the linearization of the function at a. Then we can approximate f of x with this linearization, and this is called the standard linear approximation of f at this point a, and we would call a the center of the approximation. Let's get into the examples. This problem asks us to find the linearization of the square root of 1 plus x at x equals 0, and we want to use this linearization, this tangent line, to approximate the square root of 1.02. And then we can use a calculator to see how accurate our linear approximation is. Remember, linearization in this context is just a fancy word for the tangent line. So the linearization of this function at x equals 0 is the tangent line at x equals 0. So we simply need to find the tangent line, and for that we need a point and a slope. For the point, we know that the x-coordinate is going to be 0, and for the y-coordinate, we just need to plug 0 into the function. And if we plug 0 into the function, so we look at f of 0, that's just going to be the square root of 1 plus 0, which is 1. So our point is 0, 1. Then we need to find the slope, and to do that, we'll have to take the derivative. Remember that we can rewrite radicals as exponents. So another way we could write f of x is 1 plus x to the power of a half. That's the same as a square root. Then we can take the derivative using the power rule. f prime, the derivative of f, is going to be 1 half multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of negative half. Then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function, because it's a chain rule situation, but of course in this case that's 1, so we are done. That's the derivative. Now to find the slope, we need to plug in the point. We want the tangent at x equals 0. So we want the slope at x equals 0. So let's put 0 into our derivative to figure out what the slope is there. f prime of 0 is equal to 1 half multiplied by 1 plus 0 to the power of negative half. And this, of course, is just equal to 1 half. So our linearization, our tangent line, which we could just call L of x, is what? Well, if we wrote it in point-slope form, it would be L of x, playing the role of y here, L of x minus the y-coordinate, which was 1, equals the slope, which is 1 half, 
multiplied by x minus the x coordinate of 0, which is just x. And then we could add 1 to both sides and find that the linearization L of x is equal to 1 half x plus 1. You can see in the equation given here, this f of a on the right side is just the minus y coordinate from point slope form add it over to the right side like we've done here. Now that we've got the linearization of the square root of one plus x at x equals zero, we can use it to make a linear approximation of the square root of 1.02. So to do this, what do we plug in to the linearization? Well, we're approximating this function, square root of one plus x. And the specific thing we want to approximate in this case is square root of one 0.02. So the x is 0 0.02. So we should plug 0 0.02 into our linearization. So L of 0 0.02 is equal to 1 half multiplied by 0 0.02 plus 1. 1 half of 0 0.02 is 0 0.01. And so our approximation is 1 0.01. Now, how does our simple linear approximation compare to a calculator? Well, the linearization gave us this, that the square root of 1.02 is about 1.01. .01. A calculator gives this, and the error, the absolute difference between the two numbers, is about 4.95 times 10 to the power of negative 5. So we can say that our error, it's quite small in this case. It's less than 10 to the power of negative 4. So not bad for such a simple approximation. As you should expect, the approximations will be better the closer we are to the center of the linearization. In this problem, we made our linearization centered at x equals zero. So for small values of x, it will be a decent approximation. As we get further away from zero, so we get these bigger values of x, the approximation gets worse. If we were to approximate the square root of 1.002 using our linearization, that's an even better approximation with an error less than 10 to the power of negative six. This is the approximation that we worked through. If we go a little bit further and try to approximate the square root of 1.2, the error of the approximation is a little bit bigger it's only less than a 10 to the negative 2. And for a more extreme example, remember that the function in question is the square root of 1 plus x. So what if we wanted to use our linearization centered at 0 to approximate the square root of 3? Well, to do that, we'd have to plug 2 into our linearization. And that would give us that we've got 1 half multiplied by 2 plus 1. And so the linear approximation would be 2, which really is not close at all because the square root of 3 is about 1.7 and change. So we've gone quite far away from the center, x equals 0 by plugging in x equals two, and you can see the approximation now isn't even accurate to a single decimal place. All right, one more example before we go. Let's find the linearization of cosine of x at x equals pi over two, and then use it to approximate cosine of 1.75. 1 1.75 is pretty close to pi over two, so this is a somewhat reasonable approximation. And again, we will determine the accuracy of the approximation using a calculator. We'll see how big our error is. Now to find the linearization, we're just looking for tangent lines. So the first thing we need is a point, and to find the point, we need an x coordinate, which is given as pi over two. And then for the y coordinate, we just need to plug pi over two into the function. Cosine of pi over two is zero. So there's our point. We can move on to slope. To find the slope, we need to plug pi over two, the desired x coordinate, into the derivative of our function. The derivative of our function is negative sine, so we could write that f prime is equal to negative sine, and we want the slope at pi over two, so let's plug pi over two into this derivative. If we plug pi over two into this, we get negative sine 
of pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, so this is going to be negative 1. We've got a point, we've got a slope, we've got our linearization. It's equal to the y-coordinate of 0, so we don't have to write that, and then plus the slope of negative 1 multiplied by x minus the x-coordinate of pi over 2. Then, since we're looking to approximate cosine of 1.75, we'll plug 1.75 into our linearization. So cosine of 1.75 is about negative 1.75 plus pi over 2, which if you're curious, a calculator gives as negative 0.179, etc. So what is the error of this approximation? Well, a calculator gives negative 0.178, etc., as the value for cosine of 1.75, and the distance between our linear approximation negative 1.75 plus pi over 2, and the calculator's value for cosine of 1.75 is about 9.57 times 10 to the negative 4. Again, a pretty solid approximation. We could say that the error is less than 10 to the negative 3. So that's just a quick look at linearizations and local approximations, how to compute them, and why they make some sense for differentiable functions. Here again are some of the terms in this definition if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions.